Good evening. It's seven o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Linda Castro Castronovo. 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 Okay. So I'm here because I'd like your um, advice and opinion about investing in this property as a senior co-housing, um, a small senior co-housing community. So it's a it's a single family home at the moment. It's three Middle Street. So it sits on two acres of land right on the river. And um, what we're, you can see on the second and third page that there's a, you know, a, a proposed outline of common space in the center of the house, and then possibly converting it to three or four, the other parts of the garage, barn, and older part of the house into three or four separate condominium type units. You're not zoned for it. We're not zoned for it. Correct. At the senior overlay district? You have senior overlay district only if they're the bike path. You're on, the, you're on the other side of the bike path. It's also existing structures where they're located. Pardon? It's existing structures where they're located. Oh, it is. We wrote that in because oh, of town, okay. uh, North Abbey Hall. Okay. Okay. So okay. it's on town water and sewer. Um, and we would maintain the existing town water and sewer connection into the commons, to the common space. So there'd be a um, homeowners association that would, you know. These would be rental units? No, they would be condominium type units. Okay. So they'd be the individual units would be bought and sold. Each owner would be a partial owner of the common space. So the, I, when I read the zoning, the bylaws for the senior overlay district, the only thing that looked like we might not match is that it has a minimum number of units as eight, and we're talking about three or four. You can see on the the last page. There's a, um, we might maintain the garage as it is right now as a garage and make the barn, the barn would be converted into two units and have a unit in the older part of the house. So it would be three or four units. And each of those units would then have a separate connection to water and sewer. Okay. And you know, electricity. These will all be market rate units market rate units, but for 55 and older. Right, okay. So there's going to be no expansion of the existing house? Correct. It's, we would use the same footprint and try to maintain the same look. Especially the barn, I mean the front part of the house wouldn't change at all on the outside, but what faces the road, you know, that, but the barn would change a little bit because there would be windows and doors in it, but we try to maintain that same look as a barn. Well, I mean, it, like Bill says, it is, a, it is an existing structure, and mm -hmm. the bylaw does allow existing, existing structures to be converted. So, um, on the surface, it looks doable. Okay. So, you have to go through the whole permit process to do this. Right. Well, so, and that's what I wanted to come first to ask about because to get that whole, um, even the preliminary site plan, well, there, the some, designer wants about $5,000 as a retainer. Yeah. And I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to go down the drain. Yeah. Now, before you go in investing in any of that, I would recommend talking to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. I've started that already. Okay, and see what their opinions are mm -hmm. because if they violently object, then have a problem. Right. But if they're more or less, mm, or, in, or even in favor of it, but as long as they're not very much against it, then you have a decent chance. You have a decent chance. So I have, you, I have, you probably have better than a decent chance that they don't oppose it, put it that way. Okay. Um, I did have a question about it. I, you can't see it in the picture, but the driveway goes um, beside the house. Oh, maybe you can see it here. Yeah. The driveway goes, the front of the house is right here. It goes, and then the driveway goes by it. The gar garage right now is right in here, and the barn is back here. We were wondering about the possibility of extending the driveway down this little hill and around the back and putting the garage units underneath the barn in the, in the lower level. That's, I think that, that would be. That's, a, that's entirely up to you. 
So there wouldn't be any problem about it. We, we, we don't have a big problem of no garage, garage, how you how you situate it. Or, or putting, adding driveway or anything like that. No. No, the Conservation Commission may have a concern. Yeah, because you're right next to the river, you've got to be careful of the Conservation Commission. I don't okay. know if you fall into the... into the. We're not within 200 feet. I don't know. What the, and we're not in the floodplain because the house sits up high. Yeah, okay. Um, I would just put a quick one by Janice Stone because she's pretty much downstairs mm -hmm. and ask her her two cents on that. And just so you, you've covered at least that part of the base, are you subject to the Conservation Commission stuff or not? And you what may, about you, historical? You, is, do we have to? No. We don't no historical. Okay. Historical is taking a stand that they used to look, review everything that was in the village overlay district okay. and stuff. And last year we got a note from them that they don't have the membership or the time to be devoting to this kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. So they says, you know, you, you follow the, the rules and the regulations of the whatever it might be and just keep us informed. And especially if you're not making any significant, if you're not making any significant change to the exterior, whatever it looks like today is more or less going to look like when it's done. Well, I mean, the barn will not look like that, I but it will be the same size. Right, but, but I mean, I understand that. But I mean, in general, you're not going to make, a, it's not going to go from a, from a house-looking unit today to something more, very extremely modern. Right. Okay. Right. So okay. this would be 55 and older housing? 55 and older. So where did you, I'm just looking for that section that you had mentioned oh, sure. about eight. I marked up my. Okay, yeah, I see it here. Um, here it is, 27.5.5.4. Yep. Yeah. So now we have to go to check single housing development and definitions. The definitions are on the back page. So um, there's just something I saw about how um, the conversion of an existing unit was in a different uh, section. Well, I, I looked for that. There actually is a section marked conversion of existing units, but it, there was nothing underneath. I mean, I clicked on that. It didn't. Here it is. This conversion of existing units is right here at 27.4. Right. right. And that is actually back here in the table of uses as a footnote. Oh. So that is on uh, page 10 of my version. Um, but that's not just, the, that's the whole, by, those are the whole bylaws. Yeah, this is the um, table of uses, and it has a footnote for conversion of existing structures to senior housing. Mm -hmm. And that actually calls for a special permit under a different section, under section 6 and not under section 27, which might make it easier. Right, because this is written, it seems like this is written for more like something that's happening on East Street. Right. Right, the, a much this bigger development. Senior housing development talks about a master plan development of land as a unified, self-contained residential community. Yes. And that's what requires eight, because when you're getting up to that scale, um, I think we wanted to be sure you had some economy of scale that, uh, but the conversion of an existing unit is in this earlier section, which is a, a note to uh, article or section three, which is the table of uses, mm -hmm. use regulations. And um, we just haven't had this come up yet. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, for all the time we've had this, we've only had that one project actually get anywhere close to uh, we adopted this in 2008, and 11 years later, we finally have our first project underway. Right. Well, and it's, like, this, this particular piece of property is really such a nice piece of property because it is on the river with that view, and it's in walking distance of the bike path, the senior center, the library, bus route. Jim, are you looking for something a little uh, that will not cost the the exorbitant down payment that she, she's concerned about, uh, something like halfway, a little bit more sketch, so, and it would give us time to kind of review. Oh, the conceptual plan? I was looking at that list of things that has to yeah. be on there. Yeah, so, so, but go instead to the, um, 
uh, you'll have to go online, and yeah. this is the PDF that is above the. When you go into the code, yes. there's a PDF that's separate from it. If you click on section three, it'll say, "See, see the chart." <coughs> the chart is not in section three; it's just on the, on the, the opening page. Okay, and so it's the it's the code. The article three is the table of uses, okay. which looks like this. Okay. And at the end, there are notes, and note seven deals with conversion of existing structures to senior housing. And that refers you to section six of the zoning bylaw, which is the general special permit, and not to um, the section uh, on uh, senior housing. Okay. So I think that will. And that outlines what I need to. That present. outlines what you need. Okay. Um, and most likely it's not as extensive not as, as extensive because okay. we're not looking for uh, the drainage plans for the new yeah. road you're putting in right <laughs> and the other thing is it also specifically talks about existing buildings and although it doesn't it, it doesn't address the total of eight units more than likely an existing building in all district with the exception of very few can't possibly support right. eight units because right. it, it says Specifically, it says uh, uh, shall not be substantially altered and shall maintain the aesthetic and character of the older buildings in Hadley. So, therefore, if when you think about what it's saying and what it means, you, most of the time, unless you're creating a uh, a unit that is ten by twelve, you know, you're not going to have. But yeah. you, even yeah. your even your units are not huge. Twenty You're by not, what? A twenty by thirty? Yeah. Well, exactly. We're one one idea is to do it so that they're a little bit bigger with only three units. Okay. Um, all, all I'm saying is I don't think the, that that's going to be a showstopper for okay. you. The eight units. Okay. Um, and and you don't anticipate any other showstoppers. <laughs> the conservation commission would be the big one, and we the have no. One. Okay. No input on that. And, you, yep. and she's there now, or she just her office is so downstairs? Sometimes she's there at night, but she's usually there at times during the day. Yeah. Okay. Her office is at the end of this hall. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. Greg Durso. Hi. Hi. Um, I've lived in Hadley for over 18 years, and um, I've been a business owner in Hadley as well. I owned uh, um, Pastor Patty's Gifts and Goodies, so it was a gift shop and um, and um, sandwich shop with all different things that we sold. Just recently, we launched a website called Barn Out Back, which is an online gift um, store that specializes in gifts and in vintage um, pieces that I find. Um, and we had the idea of possibly um, putting a showcase just on the weekends um, in our barn that's located out back of my house. Where do you live? I live on 30 Lawrence Plain Road. So that's located right next to my um, cousin is Sabasco's um, Lumber. So it's oh, okay. right, next, right next door. Okay. And my um, brother-in-law's sister live next door to me, so I'm kind of sandwiched in between both of them. Okay. Um, so what I did was I took the um, layout of the property, and you can see how I've marked out what I would do for parking. Um, it would allow people to, like, I, it's only going to be on the weekends, so it'd be like Saturday and Sunday. And um, we would have um, just that one room in our barn um, that we would showcase and put all of the gifts in. So it's only one room. What is that? That's just the full. I just wanted to bring the full one so you could see okay. the whole property. Okay. That, that would be better to talk about. No. So this is the barn that I'm talking about? That one right there? Yep. Okay. Just, and then, just hold it open. Yep. So the barn is about how big? Um, it says 15 feet by... Looks like maybe 30? 
Yeah. 15 by 30. And so the one, there's two rooms in the front. The first room would be the one that we would use and it runs the whole length of the barn. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the one that I would use for all of the gifts. There are no steps that lead up to it. Um, okay. Okay. Now, you wonder, you would, your parking is going to be basically over here? Yeah, and we own this. Just on the grass? On the grass, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is all paved, and also this. This is a driveway with right. paving. We just felt like it would be better flow to have the, um, the actual um, parking over here because people could back out and then go out. Okay. So it just made more sense. I've talked to um, a couple of people that do like parking as a <laughs> as a sideline. This is this, this is B and M right here. Yeah. Um, or, or, or Teddy Mitchkowski. Yeah, it might. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because so this is a business. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. yeah this is yeah this is yeah. Teddy. This is this is the old B and M. Yeah. Back here. Yeah. Okay. This is my brother and sister. That's, yeah, Helen Milano's old house. Yeah. And you live there, okay? And yeah. that's Charlie. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, this is older, but so it's yeah, the same thing. <laughs> local business. First, yeah, local business zoning. Okay, you're in. You are located in the business zone. Yeah. This this barn is your back 300 feet. Yeah. Okay, you're under a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. You're not making any changes to the structure and drains Correct. or anything else. What are you going to have for a sign? Um. I would say I would probably go with Tim Nyhar with the size of it because I know okay. that when we were a business owner before we okay. would have that. I'm probably going to place it um, right here. Okay. On the edge you, of my you, your sign needs to comply with zoning. Yeah. Forty square feet. Yeah. Maximum. Yeah. Um, set back accordingly by the zoning bylaw in section seven. I think it was seven. seven by the Tim. Okay. Tim. Tim can yeah. Um, yeah. You don't need anything from us, but we'd like to see the sign before you put it up. Okay. Just a picture of the sign. So okay. Are you thinking of a permanent sign or something you'll just put out on days that you are um, open? Because, the, because of the um, website being open 24 hours, I would love to have the sign there permanently because then it would, it would stay the hours of operation. So as okay. people are driving by, they're like, it's a Tuesday. Yeah. They won't pull in and like waste their time. Okay. So that's probably the reason why that I would definitely want yeah. a permanent sign there. Yep. Yeah. And okay. that's that you're allowed to have that. Okay. Externally illuminated if you will leave it illuminate if you illuminate it at all. Okay. Um that's it. Okay. The rest all is right. between you and a building inspector. Okay. Yeah. Since you're below all the thresholds, you, we don't even need to right. okay. vote to approve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but we will need to vote to approve the sign Fine. when yeah. you have yeah. a design. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. Pujar. Oh, that a P? Yes. Pujar. Sorry, okay. My handwriting is not yeah. very good. Uh, so I'm actually a dentist and my wife is one too. And we currently work in Amherst at First Advantage Dental and we both are associates. So we are trying to open up our own dental office. Okay. And we looked into this space which is uh, Mill Valley Commons. It's right on Route 9. Yep. Uh, and one of the space was available, so we discussed into signing a lease, and it's basically empty, so it's 2,600 square feet, which serves our purpose for now. Uh, the only thing which I was told basically is to bring like the signage which right. goes outside. So uh, I think the only thing that I was told aloud by the owner is that this Pioneer Valley is the place that we are replacing. Okay. I just came up with the prototype that this is where the sign would look like. Okay. And I did get a printout of the actual sign, oh, which is... Oh, that. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's way more than anybody else does. Yeah, and it's supposed to be 71 inches wide and 15 inches tall. Okay. So that uh, that's the only sign that goes there. Uh, the only other thing that we uh, use for not signage, but the glass windows that are there, so uh, like a film something that's of course not illuminated, but something from the outside, so you know for where. privacy. Uh, but it also it says like dental care. Okay. But on the building, uh, I don't believe that the owner has given us permission to put any signs anywhere else except this assigned slot. 
Okay, and how big is the sign? 15 um, by 71. 15 by 71. Inches. Obviously. Okay. That's like... Uh, I actually had calculated six. 40 centimeter by 180. And instead of saying inches, the person printed out in centimeters and it was this yeah, humongous big sign. So we had to reprint it. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not going to fly. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure if I need to present any building outlines or anything. No, no because we, we're, the building and everything else has already been approved. Yes. You're, not, you're not making any change to the building. You're doing whatever you're going to do inside, but yes. that's will be for the building inspector and stuff like that. Not yes, as, yeah, yeah. We, we are still laying out the architecture plans. It's not finalized yet. Okay. And then we have to go through the inspection permits and all of that. Yeah. Um, probably just for the picture of it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. These things are going to be about 12 dentists within walking yeah. distance. Yeah. Yeah. It's Hadley, actually... Um, Hadley must have a lot of bad teeth. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I pretty much know. The only people that are new in town is uh, the Hampshire Mayor Dentistry. Like, they are relocating from Manchester. The other one, Valley Dentist, they are just right down the street. So they are moving into that. We are kind of just moving from Amherst. So not a lot of new people are oh, coming. I see what you're Most saying. of them are just kind of reshuffling moving their places. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we like Hadley more more than Amherst because it's right on Route 9, so okay. we were passing by this and <coughs> we thought that this is much better than Amherst. So. Okay, so we do have to ask you, you using digital imaging? Yes. Okay, because you are in the Aquifer Protection District, so... Yes. No, we actually have digital imaging, uh, fully electronic uh, computer, and uh, we are also bringing a cone beam CT scan, so we have to go through approvals for that as well, but we do plan to install that. It was amazing. 45 years ago, when I set up, <laughs> you had to have an office in Northampton and Amherst. I thought maybe Hadley. Somebody, oh, nobody would go to Hadley. So you had to have it in both places. Now, talk about the tie. Yeah, we live in Northampton, so that's yeah. kind of what we thought. Somewhere in between might be. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, it's, it's an up and coming town, so. Well, I mean, for 25 years ago, there was one dentist in town. Yeah. Now there's 12, 12, right? I mean, if you could, you know, you got the yeah. endodontist, yeah. then periodontist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oral surgeon, then Dr. And Linda Robinson, surgeon, and, and then Robinson, right Robinson, up to Sir Dr. Robinson. Piper Wilson. So yeah, yeah. I, I also go to the Valley District and I'm like one of their board and all that. So I do keep in touch with most of the dentists in the area. So I, I hope to know most of them that come and go, but it's kind of interesting where everybody's focusing on Hadley right now. So I'll make a motion to approve the use in the sign. Second. Okay. Get motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four to zero. Oh. What is the name of oh, Halley Dental Care? Yes. What's uh, okay, that's all we need to know. What's the street address? One Mill Valley Road. It's so where the the new building where the tap room is. Tap room. Uh, said, mm. Oh, right. Yeah. Right down the corner. But yeah. it looks like we're losing the uh, yeah. coral people. Uh, they're already emptied of the space since March, so it's been empty since a couple of months. Really? Where yeah. Did, did they move, where did they go? I don't know where did they go, but like when we went in there, the place was already emptied up. Uh, really? We looked at another like place uh, where the pastry shop is. There's also vacant space, but that's laid out for a law office. So if we had to open there, it was a better space. It was bigger. Then we had to go through a whole lot of renovations. This one was much easier. It was just empty, so saves us a lot of construction expense. Where'd you go to school? NYU. Mm -hmm. uh, pardon me, but are you the one who is the dentist? Yeah, yeah. retired orthodontist. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Mark they Healy say was watch out for him. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Healy was the one who said that there's uh, one person who is a retired dentist on the board. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. I thought they were doing pretty good. The uh, Coral. Oh well, he had a lot invested in that place. All the tanks. Sure did. Uh, that all incredible investment. It, I don't know if they set it all up. We're talking about the coral people. Yeah. There was going to be a combination of aquarium and a scientific research of coral too. So. Must be the funding or something. That's not he had a lot of yeah, interest. I don't know what happened yeah, to him. That's too bad. That's too bad. Yeah. But oh well. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Do I need to get anything from you? No, I will, we just put this on. I will make a photocopy of it.
think it went to the building inspector, put it in his mailbox tonight, and you want to see him tomorrow and start getting your permits. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. you're welcome. Yeah. Good luck, yep. Thank you. Cindy, Cynthia Kitsa. Hi. Hi. You signed up for oh, general right. information. <laughs> oh, no, I thought you just said to sign in. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> only for general information. Okay. Just if you're just here to listen to what's going on, you don't need to sign in. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, what time is it? Seven. Oh, seven thirty. We have time. All right, here we go. Mr. Donnelly, you'll be up in a second. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, May twenty first, two thousand nineteen, beginning at seven fifteen p.m. in room two hundred three of the Hadley Town Hall. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Gulmohar. Hope I said that right. Realty for special permits, site plan approval business use in aquifer and erosion and sediment control to construct approximately a 50,500 square foot building at 237 Russell Street, site of existing roadway, roadway in, which will be torn down and new buildings erected. The proposed use is a three-story hotel of approximately 80 rooms. Application and plans may be viewed in the town clerk's office for normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, May 6 and 13. Is it, is it 80 rooms or 70 rooms? Because they've last it's, Well, there's been a little change, which I'll discuss. It's what? Uh, there's been a little change. The original submission that we gave you was 80 rooms. Yeah. And now it is 77. Uh, okay, well, close enough. All right, that's fine. What would you like to even plan set up? What's that? What would you like to eat or so? Okay. Here, that's Joe. Yeah, right there, John. Joe, best of camera angle <coughs> plans. That's how to be a little, a little better for my camera. Okay. Thanks. A little bit further over to the ward, towards the wall, if you could. That's perfect. from Brooks Design and here to present the uh, Town Place Suites from Marriott. I think you're familiar with the site, the site of the existing roadway in, uh, this existing 70 room hotel there, I mean uh, 80 room hotel. Um, and the proposal is to demolish all the buildings and put in one large new building in place of this. It's two buildings. Two buildings. Two buildings today. Yeah. Um, tear down two buildings there today and replace with one large building. Um, right. Some of the items I wanted to point out to you to keep in the back of your mind as we look at the new proposal mm -hmm. is the width of the driveway mm -hmm. coming off Route 9 mm -hmm. is extremely wide at that location. Mm -hmm. uh, another aspect mm -hmm. is this line here is the existing 35 foot no disturb zone from the Conservation Commission. Uh, and right now it slightly creeps over the edge of the pavement and developed. Primarily the reason that uh, the wetlands have crept over the last 12 years since uh, the original plan was done. So again, we're going to totally demolish that. This is an existing dwelling in the past here. Um, on the previous approval that we were before the board with, um, we had the site and we had this area here as reserve parking. Uh, that was what was previously approved. And the proposed conditions, the general layout of the building and the site. Chairs. Can we move our chairs so we can see that? Sure. Over here. Yeah. 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 You can sit on a bench if you want. Yeah. Yeah. This is a correction. It's not one large building, it's two buildings. Yeah. Two buildings connected. There are two buildings Wait. connected. You've got. <laughs> You, there's two existing buildings today. Correct. And you're going to build two buildings. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure of that because with, I wasn't sure if you're trying with. to correct Mark of two buildings today or two buildings in the future. There's two buildings in the existing. Okay. Two buildings proposal in the future. There is a connection between the two. Okay. Like you like the, kind of like there is over on your um, Mayor, uh, Hampton Inn over there. There's a small walkway between the buildings over there, right? Connected building. No, they are separate. Oh, I thought there was a walkway between them. We don't have connected from. Okay. Meeting, meeting place to the yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
we'll go with the architecture um, in general. Okay. Um, just uh, in general, uh, again, doing general layout of the site, we're proposing to um, construct a 77 room hotel. There's existing 80 rooms there, so we're decreasing the number of rooms on the site, so it's no change in use, a slightly change in the number of units. Um, we will be providing um, 83 parking spaces on the site. Um, and the driveway, we've narrowed it down to 24 feet, which is a little more in, in line with what Mass DOT is going to require. We'll make a slight modification there. I think the traffic flow on this proposal is much nicer than what was there before. It was a little bit disjointed. Uh, there was also parking in the front 50-foot setback, which was grandfathered back in 2006 when the other plans were done. This proposal pulls all the plan, all the parking outside of the front setback in compliance with current zoning requirements. Um, the, the buildings will get into the architecture better. Uh, the main drop off is at this location here. This is the front entry of the building. There is a patio area in this location for outdoor tables, uh, barbecue, and this is actually a fire pit outside for them to use. Uh, this is a seating wall here, which sort of um, allows a little bit of privacy from the vehicles. Um, we have handicapped parking places as well. We'll get into the landscape in a moment. There's also a pool inside the building. There's an outdoor patio here for the patrons to utilize and sit outside on lounge chairs uh, when utilizing the pool. Um, we do have a dumpster in the same look in the back too, much more accessible directly for the, the um, drop vehicles to get into. There is an existing uh, emergency access road here which we're proposing to maintain. So that residential house which sits here in the emergency access road remains the same and no changes associated with that. This is a planting plan. We have 18 full-size trees proposed for the project. Um, we do have landscaped islands separating the different parking bays. So there's a landscaped island here, here with the multiple trees planted on them. A row of trees along the front is on Route 9. We do also have specimen trees in the rear. Um, another specimen tree here. And a row of arborvitaes here to um, sort of prevent encroachment towards the wetlands. We have had, um, trying to make this a sort of simple thing because it is uh, essentially the same project. It was a hotel, the site was paved. I think we made a, mass, a vast improvement to the parking and circulation. Um, from a drainage perspective, the previous plan collected the drainage, um, put it into an underground storage system in this location and discharged it into the wetlands after treating it for water quality and um, attenuation. The rules have changed since that time, um, slightly, not much, um, but we have designed, you know, we're going to flip through here, we can always go back. Uh, this is a grading plan, which is sort of difficult to read, but we have proposed to, on the, grade, on the drainage plan, utilities plan, we're going to collect most of the drainage from the front portion of the site, bring it to an underground, um, bring it to a treatment system here, which is existing and discharges the wetlands as it currently does. We're collecting all the drainage from this portion of the building into another subsurface system, which will treat the water from the paved areas, release it slowly at, at existing uh, rates. And we also have a secondary system here, which will collect most of the drainage from the roof, clean water, have an opportunity to attenuate it for peak flow attenuation, as well as recharge. Um, the reason this system is a little bit different than the previous one, regulations have changed, um, recharge requirements have changed, and groundwater separation have changed as far as the state standards for stormwater. So we've done current test pits out there to confirm the soils, and these are in strict compliance with the state uh, stormwater standards, and also the city, I mean, the town of um, Hadley stormwater standards with one minor exception. Uh, stormwater standards in Hadley, require three foot of separation between the bottom infiltration system and the groundwater. Um, this particular situation is two feet above, the bottom of the system is two feet above groundwater. We are asking for a variance from that requirement. Uh, it's been asked before, and the two foot separation is in compliance with the state standards. Is that from us or from the Conservation Commission? That is in your wetland, that okay. is in your stormwater guidelines. Um, 
Speaking of Conservation Commission, one week ago today, uh, we presented the project to the Conservation Commission. Um, we have made some modifications to the plans as a result of that meeting. We we're going back to them next, uh, next month. But one of the modifications that had we plans that you originally were submitted to you, we had the building come out a little bit farther at this location. Um, and we also had the, the, uh, the dumpster over in this location. The Conservation Commission was very concerned about the proximity of the building to their 35 foot no disturb zone. Um, and to remedy that, um, they, we, uh, eliminated three rooms on the end of the building and simply shrunk the building and pushed it back this way, changed the stairwell and internal configuration of the building and pushed it back to give us more breathing room. Um, first thought was, well, I want to just take the whole thing and slide it this way. We wanted to do that, but uh, we're sort of dictated to put the buildings in the back. The property line is difficult to see here, but sort of converges. It's wider in the back and narrow in the front. And we have a setback of 15 feet here, a modular size for the buildings and the rooms. And that leaves us very little room there to put a sidewalk and a roadway and also leave a little bit of green space between us and Randy's property to fit everything in there. So we're already down to 22 feet here from driveway width next to the building versus the 24, which is more comfortable. So to slide the building forward, we would decrease that even more. So we felt we pushed the building back towards the uh, north as far as possible. Um, we do have a peer review on the project. Um, I know, I think it got to you on Friday right. or Monday. Right. Uh, again, I think it was uh, clear that uh, we complied with all the requirements from the uh, uh, zoning requirements. Um, Separate part if there's much more, we'll go on the site and we we'll jump into the architecture. Yeah, the only thing about they said you, the only thing you're not in compliance with is the parking, right? And you were saying right. you're going to you're going to you're going to have to no, go some TDR. Well, that's right. So I should go. These are construction details. I forgot to go through the TDR process. We are out of compliance with the zone, but the. Uh, with the uh, even, even with departments. even with the reserved. Yes. Okay. So um, this is two-story building. The other one was a one-story building. Oh, so right. okay. we have uh, the parking areas here. We've sort of, and the parking areas are shaded one color, which you can see. The dark shaded area, I mean, that's cross-hatched areas for the reserve parking. And the, the, the gray area are the open space. Uh, based upon that requirement, we are 7.3 acres shy, or require 7.3 acres a TDR conversion to accomplish the okay. uh, transfer of development rights. Okay. And then I think I said, Ooh, we're not posted. We didn't I post didn't for post that. for TDR. You didn't post for TDR. I think that was in our application, but. Oh, yeah, I just I saw the road just set up a control TDR. We, we can, I can repost for the TDR, but we, we, can, we can approve this subject to the TDR approval if that's not it should be okay. a problem. Um, and I'll probably explain to, to Mark about the uh, inadequate parking in the uh, purchase of additional parking for a transfer of development rights. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you people, well, we, we, our yeah. parking, that, well, this was, Mark, this Mark. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you put, we, we, the town bylaws, zoning bylaw requires two square feet of parking for each square feet of building. <clears throat> that two feet includes parking, driveways around it, and those kind of items and I don't know how many years we put TDR in. And that's, that's part of the APR. Um, no. 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 Well, well, no, not directly. Not directly. Not directly. But it Trans is TDR. In, in lieu of not enough parking, they will purchase some open space agricultural right. land. Tra right. Transfer to Ellen Wright. So one yes. acre of TD of, of farmland um, equals 2,000 square feet of parking. Um, 20 parking spaces at 200 square feet per parking is 4,000 square feet. 4,000 square feet. One, so one acre of parking purchases 4,000 square feet of parking. That includes driveways and everything else. So it's like a combination of everything. And so it says there's seven acres short, sure, they're going to have to purchase. Oh, 7.3 acres is what you need to purchase. Correct. Okay. All right. I'm going to say. 
Yeah, girls, you're not seven point three acres shy. You'll have no, some. No, no, no. 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 We, so they got to put some in here. <laughs> they, uh, they've got to put a seven point yeah. three acres yeah, of we're, TDR. We're, uh, we're Thirty thousand square feet shy. And of, every, but. approximately every uh, year, the conservation and the price of TDR land which is, goes into a fund, mm -hmm. and that is used primarily to purchase a, the town's share of APR rights. And I think as of 2017, which is the most up-to-date number we have, one acre of TDR, or one acre they need to purchase is 99.78, so it'll be 7.3 times 99.78. That's $9,978. $9,978. So it'll be about uh, you know, roughly sixty. Five thousand, seventy thousand dollars of eight, they're going to have to put into the TDR. When you go into town meeting, especially this last one, they were drawing money out of different funds, and one of them was what they call the TDR fund. That's a special fund set aside specifically to track TDR um, contributions, and the town has been well very successful in using the TDR funds and a TDR thing from both a business perspective and from the APR perspective in that, you know, not everybody requires all the parking that's required. Um, you know, but if it's a restaurant or some other certain types of businesses, then no, we, you can't give it, but you know, hotels, um, you know, con some convenience stores, but department stores and stuff primarily need that parking, like when, uh, uh, just an example, Harbor Freight. Is needs to be for the two buildings putting on site. There's quite a bit of parking there, and we asked them if they needed that much parking because they don't need to pave it all. And they says no. The uh, the uh, developer, not the developer, but the uh, prospective businesses feel they need all that parking space. And okay, then that's fine. You can pave it. But we build what we need. But we right. have to show that we can comply. Right. So for Mark, as a historical note, we uh, when we originally adopted this says we adopted it only in 2000. I thought we had it before that, but the uh, when we originally adopted uh, transfer development rights under the heading farmland preservation bylaw, uh, we offered the opportunity of either buying development rights directly from a farmer. Mm. We envisioned that as sort of a secondary market to the state conservation or uh, the state agricultural preservation restriction which moves very slowly but in the all the years that we have had this we have never had a single developer actually negotiate a deal with a farmer they've all been very happy just to contribute to our fund, contribute to our fund yeah. and move on yeah. and, and the fund is used up like we said is used to purchase pound share of APR right to develop the rights. makes sense because they're on a time frame they're trying to get right. the, it's easier to just write that yeah. check than to go out and negotiate right. Right. and because okay. they did not use the parking that they had set aside that has already been calculated into the yeah. water drainage yeah. and the storm water runoff right no, we don't. Our our design for stormwater, as we have presented to the commission, I mean to the board, is for the proposed development. If this were to be developed, we'd have to come up with a so stormwater management system for the expanded parking area. Right, and that that's okay. We they've done that before, and yeah. that they have the land to put additional. I mean, they could they could they would use a similar underground system. I could design something made out of titanium right now. I wanted to because we're not going to build it, but we right. have adequate room to do some sort right. of detention right. and filtration. Yeah, that, that's the important thing is that you have the adequate space to design something. So that portion that you just had your hand on is not going to be included with this development as the parking? Correct. You, the plans that I showed previously, that's, that's what was going to be constructed. This is reserve parking area. We can't do anything with it because it's reserved parking and we can't put buildings on else and every right. time we come back we'd have to come back to the planning board right. to approve that. So you have the parking calculator already. You said 83 parking yeah, that's uh, that's adequate for our needs. They're, they're putting they're putting put, installing what they, they feel they need. Right. We feel even full occupancy we still have room for some staff. Um, it's amazing we, how many we hope we have full occupancy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this don't oh which what what, what yeah, I, mean, you, I know you said it once but what what is uh the brand this is going to be? This is a Marriott Town Marriott Place. Marriott Town, Town Place. Town Place. Marriott. Town Place Suites. Town Place Suites. Oh, Marriott, Marriott Town Place. So this is Suites. Okay, this is Suites again. Right. Yeah, these are the smaller suites, very small suites. 
Okay. As compared to the yeah. compared to the home one we just so did. Okay. It's a much smaller room, and much less. That's a good point uh, that Jim brought up regarding the suites. Past history of this place, this building, the old place, uh, was called suites originally, and then it turned into rental apartments. This is not going to be your planning, of course. No, no, Marriott so, will never allow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are high-end names that you're seeing going in here. These are not. Yeah, they're 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 so Marriott old. will never allow us yeah. to do like yeah. monthly or weekly rentals. So what's what's going to be your time limit on renting the suite? Normally, it's six days to one month. You know, not more. Than that. Usually, the average length of stay for something similar to this, just like the Homewood. A normal guest stays around like 5.3 or 4.8 days, so they don't stay longer than that. Okay. Just like Mark going on a business trip and doing a job someplace. <laughs> yeah, I could get you the actual number. Yeah, that's okay. With the average yeah. length of stay. Yeah, that would be appropriate because yeah. I'm yeah. sure we're going to get the question. This is like a, a stealth apartment complex, yeah. which would not be allowed. No, I, no, they have statistics, and Homewood has it, and these guys have it, but it's not. And I could bring it next time. Okay. Um, I'll take no more questions on the site. We'll jump into the architecture. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to say I'm the outside guy. And Rick will be the inside guy here. So okay. he's much more adept at explaining this than I am. Hi, I'm Rick Hexanos with Asia Architecture. We're in downtown Northampton. Okay. Um, a lot of this is driven by Town Place Marriott, their standards. Um, and obviously then tempered to meet the town of Hadley's requirements. Um, so basically, I think you already know the square footage of the building. Um, we're meeting all of the requirements as far as um, aesthetically, um, the continuous roof, uh, the cupolas, the materials here. Uh, the first floor is going to be a, a stone veneer, and the second floor will, uh, and third floor will be horizontal siding. Um, and the roofing at this point in time, correct me if I'm wrong, is we're just going with asphalt shingles. Yeah. Um, so fitting in with what else is in, is in the area. Uh, fixed windows with air conditioning units, um, grills here. You can kind of see the, the first floor is perforated. The, I'm going to go to the floor plan. Are, are the air conditioning units hanging out the windows or they're, no, under, no, they're, they're just, underneath the window? They're, no. inter, they're integral into the windows. Oh, so yeah. Nowadays, everything is inside the room. Yeah, it's in the room. So, so there's that nothing. Is there's no oh, ports really? or anything yeah. sticking out. It's just a grill. Do you want to it's a grill oh, just within, just within the window it? system. Okay. So you got glass, 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 and a grill. Okay. But it's all one integral storefront unit. Okay. So what's the height of the building? Uh, the main building is at 57 feet three inches. The cupolas top out at 65 feet. <clears throat> Those cupolas don't count. Yeah, I know. Okay, <laughs> just putting it there for a record. Okay. Um, so, punched windows for the rooms up above, down here in the public spaces. I'm going to flip over quickly to the we floor plan. Um, we the floor plans there, right? No? All right. We don't need the floor plan. Okay, so I'll just tell you yeah. why the it's fenestration the is the way it is. Okay. Okay, so um, as you basically come in here, um, these are the public areas, so uh, town place, you know, really wants to make, it's more than just a little lobby. So there's a gathering space, they do a breakfast buffet kind of arrangement, and that space sort of flows. So it's a much larger interior lobby, and that's one of the reasons why. Um, there's a lot of windows down here, because okay. there are open public spaces. And there's a fitness center, which is also one of the amenities that's standard for this um, brand, um, which also would be along there. And then on the outside, Mark had mentioned <clears throat> the fire pit, little outdoor entertainment area so they can have an acoustic guitarist kind of thing on a Friday night sort of an amenity thing um, that's right outside of that lobby space. On the back side, this glass is basically representing the pool. The pool is entirely inside the building, but there is an exterior patio, so in nice weather, there are doors on the ends of the storefront where people can, can go outside, um, but there is not an exterior pool on this building. Um, <clears throat> this is where Mark was talking about. You can see that this has changed a little bit from the last. Um, we had to clip that corner and take those th three rooms out and sort of shift the stair back. 
and that was in addressing the conservation commission's uh, concerns. You got your nice clips here, Mark. I don't want to. Let's go. That's it. Uh, and then this is basically the uh, the other views, east facade and the west facades. No, wh which is the front view? This is the front. That's the, that's the front. Okay. This is the front. So this is the entrance lobby. Okay. But the entrance doors are on the on the side. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and this is the side that's going to face this, east. This is the side that, that is facing south. That's actually. Oh, the pool. oh. Okay. Oh, that's the back side. Yep. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Is that and then the other then? Okay. Yeah, we didn't fit them contiguous. Yeah, yeah okay. We kind of split. Then there's the east and the west. The these, are, these, are the, these are the east and west. East side, and this is the okay. west. Okay. And up in the gable, that's signage. This is signage up here in this gable. Yes. There's <clears throat> gable signage on both of those east and west facing, and then above the entrance. How big are those signs? Uh, I do not know at this point in time. In all honesty. That's regulated under section seven. Okay. You're allowed multiple signs, yeah. but the total square footage has to be within 64 square feet. That's okay. all. So they're not going to all be there then. Okay. Because that, if we dip into all of those, we're going to be yeah. over. And that's based not on the face of the letters, but on the square. So, yes, a rectangle drawn around, around the, the right. mass. Yep. Understood. Yeah, you're allowed, I think it's up to three or four signs. The, the total but an is aggregate like, of 64 square correct. feet total. Okay. So consider there would be at this end. We are not grandfathering. We have the sign on the building right now. You're taking it down? Yeah. You're taking everything down. We'll leave it. You're referring to the pile and sign out front or? No, on the building. On oh, the building, okay. Yeah. So, what's the sign out front going to look the like? The sign outside that is re re uh, remaining in the same location, same uh, same size, same location. We're not modifying the uh, sign. I, we don't have a new picture of what the sign's going to look like. Externally, Luke? Actually, we've had that 64 square foot building sign limit for a long time, so I'm sure you're either in compliance, you must be in compliance. And that was 2006 when we did the modification, I think. We had 64, we've had 64 a square feet time. for a long time uh, for the building side. We didn't used to allow it to be divided into, into multiple sides. It had to be one, 64, one side on the building, one side on the pylon. The change was to allow multiple signs on the building, but still not to exceed 64 square feet. Okay. The, uh, uh, Externally illuminated. The, the no sign, signs. The piling sign. The pylon sign. Or back line. Pylon sign is internally illuminated. The existing right pylon right sign now, is internally illuminated. In, right. It's inside. Mm -hmm. That they can get away with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that one would be grandfathered. You yeah. can, those, those need to be externally illuminated and backlighting on the building. Backlighting is also permitted. That a lot of there's quite a few businesses since they found out backlighting is permitted. They're going for backlighting. Mm -hmm. Actually, it gives you, I think it gives a prettier sign. It is nice. And yeah. it's it, I mean it makes the sign stand out for sure. And it, it's not as as a intrusive as an internally illuminated sign mm -hmm. that goes right out. Um, just like a sub, subdued light, if you would. Yeah. Um, anyways, okay. Okay. So we're allowed that again, 64 square feet. Yes. Okay. The Signage on the building is separate from the pylon. Correct. So we are, we were, we got 64 build, we on the building, 64 square feet on the building, and 64 on the pylon. Correct. Yes. Okay. And the as building signs can be divided. We got up as three or four signs. A lot of buildings will face different. They have different right. views, mm -hmm. and they wanted multiple signs. So he's okay. We'll give you multiple signs as long as the total is within the 64. If you allowed multiple road signs, you'd see. I couldn't imagine what you'd see. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. No, no problem. Um, I don't know if you have any other specific questions. What's the footprint of each building? Uh, the total aggregate is fifteen nine ninety. You have the total total for each building. Per each, each building. building. Right. That's what. 
you could take that number and divide it by four. <laughs> No, no, no. Can't can't building is divide by two. Oh, by two yeah. they, they have less than 12,500. Uh, it's 15,638 square feet per floor. No, no, what, no. what is the he, footprint? Is footprint? You've got two buildings. What's the right. footprint? Eight footprint. Eight, eight footprint of each building. It's different. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't have that. Okay. Okay. But they're, they're within, they're less than 12,5. Yeah. Yes. 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 If you've yes. got 12,500, yeah. You know, if you got a if you got fifteen five per floor, and you've got two buildings, you've got to be a rough, roughly half. I mean, or maybe yeah, two yeah. thirds, one third. Yeah, we are, yeah. We are yeah. They're, less they're, than twelve thousand. They're very close to being similar in size. Yeah. So right. you did, did, did yeah. it. Yeah. Eight and seven okay. or something. And there's a walkway joining them. Correct. All floors or just one floor? All, All floors. floors. All floors. Yes. Just curious, why is that? Is it Marriott requirement or rather than making one building, you're making two walkways? One set of elevators. Or is there two sets of elevators? Each building have their own elevator? No, no, no. 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 The no, entrance lobby, the building, building that contains elevator. the entrance lobby has elevators and then that gets you up to each floor and then you cross. Then the you cross over and there's stairways in each one for emergency there access. Is. Okay, that, that, that's one of the reasons. Elevator, one, one set of elevators, Joe. Okay, yeah. Lighting. Exterior. Oh, outside lighting. Outside lighting. Parking lot lighting. We Parking don't lot. have that with us right now. I know that. Uh, we will be dark sky compliant. We will comply with this now. There's existing uh, LED brand new light poles out there. We want to utilize those as much as possible for a cost savings, but we have an opportunity to place those and do a, a isometric lighting okay. plan for the site yet. But we'll be in total compliance with you. I'm not sure I heard everything you said at the beginning when you were going through the site plan about the buffer in the back and it creeping. So you're making that better? or? Yeah, there's, there's two things. Uh, uh, back in 2006, we modified the site, but that was currently on there. And at that point in time, the town had a 35 foot no disturb line as well. Uh, at that time, we flagged the wetlands, created that 35-foot no disturb line, and built it accordingly. Um, your permit and the wetland delineation expires after three years, so technically, legally, that line just disappears. We had it recently flagged over time, wetlands, and interpretation of who put the flags on the ground changed slightly. Mm -hmm. So the 35-foot uh, no disturb line today is a little different than it was in 2006. But regardless, we're pulling the proposed project will be further away from the wetlands right. than they are today. Okay. Questions? From the questions board? Any other questions from the board? Nope. Questions from the audience? Yes, yeah. quite a few. <laughs> okay. Um, we we kind of addressed the wetlands issue last week at the conservation center uh, meeting that was here last week. And um, they wanted the building moved um, 30 feet or so towards the front because they also wanted a maintenance area to get mowers around and stay away from the wetlands area. Also, the wetlands has changed over the last 30, 40 years. And that possibly when the original hotel was built, that the drainage was not adequate back then. I think their plan was to um, do a lot of things but connect to the old piping. And maybe a study needs to be redone to adequately protect that wetland area. Because it certainly has changed quite a bit. If you walk by, you'll see many trees that are 50, 100 years old that have just toppled into the wetland area. Um, our property, uh, us free neighbors, are on the back side of this hotel. And we got concerns with the height of the building. It used to be a two-story building, now it's gonna be a three-story building. Um, we have concerns about noise when the garbage truck's backing up to the dumpster. We have concerns with lighting, fringing across that wetlands area onto our neighborhood. 
Um, so there, there's a lot of things. Can the, can the building be slightly modified to uh, accommodate parking on the other side of the building or further away because, as you know, noise travels. We already hear diesel engines on tractor trailers idling in the parking lot, idling all night long. Refrigerator trucks. Oh, Refrigerator tr right. trucks idling all night long, tractor trailers, garbage trucks backing up, and that's a concern. D d if you're, if <clears throat> back up, one thing at a time here. Okay. If you're hearing diesel engines or refrigerated trucks, in, if you're hearing engines running all night long, yes. it's against state law. Well, it's happening. Well, it's, it's happening. happening. Okay. <coughs> Who are you reporting it to? I, I go there and I go to the police, and sometimes the police come over. One time I went to the um, front thing and they said, oh no, we're in compliance and stuff, but they park it right under, by the line. Under state law, a diesel engine cannot idle for more than five minutes. Regardless of the weather, okay. they have to be shut off. And that's that's state law. That's not a zoning bylaw. That is state DLT okay. law. And they have their bus buses back there too. And a lot of times when the electric companies were there staying, of course when Sully's was there, they used to run it for an hour and a half before they'd come back and get in the trucks. We can feel when they shut off the refrigerator truck, uh, truck shuts off. You can hear it. You can feel the house stop shaking. That's how bad it is. And I've gone over there. Matter of fact, one person was really nice. They went over to the truck driver and said, you know, um, you're idling. He wasn't even staying at the hotel. He was just parked there. You know, but I've gone there quite a few times and I've just given up. Because they said, oh, no, they're in compliance. That's what okay. the front desk would tell me. And you were concerned about the new outdoor area outside their swimming pool where they're going to have, you know, guests and music and and things sitting outside. I'm not sure and, we said we're going to have and, the music. The other and, part is, regarding the noise, you know what's also annoying is when you hear dirt bikes and ATVs riding across during the whole day on a public road. So, that's not you know, that, that's, kids are that's been going on for a while. Oh, but the oh, other yes. thing is to know for the board is the main parking is now in the front, the majority of the parking, with the giant building blocking it from the back. I would ask for the lighting plan. It would be nice to see that. Oh, that we, would we, 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 we're waiting for that. We, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, just yeah. be you know, to see yeah, that. There, there, will be, be, there will no, be no approval granted till we get the lighting plan. And I think, um, again, it would be, um, I, I'm against giving them a variance um, for, you know, the, the three feet separation of groundwater. We're right on top of an aquifer. And, and they're asking to be again not compliant. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? Variance for what? They're, they're going to ask for variance instead of having a three foot separation between the groundwater. And maybe they can explain it again. Maybe I misunderstood. But as I understood it, that it, they're going to only be a foot short. Okay, right, right. now. So, uh, you know, there's some concerns because that air, everywhere in Hadley building up, the water table is rising, and I can show you in pictures today of okay. the river behind us and if, the road. If we, have a, if we have an engineering group that says this is the design is okay, and we have another, our consulting engineering group that reviews their design and said it's okay, we don't go by our hearsay or somebody else said that, well, we think it's a concern. If you can find an engineering, and we, I'm, I'm trying to be a wise guy here, drainage is a very hot topic. That's why we have a consulting engineer review the drainage. They say it's good. Our consulting engineer said it's good. We don't second guess that. In very rare cases do we second guess two engineering groups, one of them that works directly for the town, saying that it's going to work. You don't like it, okay? And I'm not trying to be a wise guy here. Remember that. You would need to hire an engineering consultant mm -hmm. at your expense that says their design is not good. We have a family of engineers, so it's not going to be a problem. That'd be me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Under a yeah. professional, like a professional civil engineer that says their design is no good okay. based on these facts. If you can get that, then we have an issue. We, we have something we can talk about. We have because we have two consulting engineers that said it's good. So based on facts, it's what we go by in engineering you and know, can I numbers. Can ask a question in, in line with that? Originally, and again, you've made some changes from, but originally you were gonna use the drainage that you had used on the original property. You said that you were gonna use that design, and we said that was 20 years ago. Have you changed that? 
that drainage plan or are you still using the original design for the original hotel? Because that, that was a concern because it's not the original hotel, it's a bigger hotel and it's a different design. So I'm not sure, and I, you, you, know, you covered a lot of ground, so that was something well, I Let me explain to... uh, very quickly the, the drainage process. The existing hotel was designed with a stormwater, underground stormwater management system. We're proposing to totally remove that. That's, that's going to be totally taken out and taken out of the ground. We're going to install a new, totally new system. The new system is superior to the old system in two ways. One, it's, uh, it meets current standards, which are higher than what they were before, plus the fact that we are actually decreasing the amount of pavement and surface areas and pervious areas with this proposal than what was there now. So there will be a decrease and runoff, less pavement, and this drainage system is uh, more advanced than the existing system. With the lighting, so the lighting Mark, what is the authority you're pointing us to for deviation from the requirements? It's under the stormwater um, regulations. So two two feet control. versus three feet. Correct. Yeah. Is it in the zoning bylaw or the general bylaw? No, it's a waiver. I think it's under, I'm not sure. I just know I've run across the people. Uh, actually, I think the peer review letter actually refers to it as well. There was some concern about the lighting while they're looking that up, but the we do measure if, if the light will go one foot candle power over their oh, property line, points. they're in violation. So there is a measurement to, to abate the uh, potential lighting and we asked for a shoebox lighting so it'll shine down on the parking lot and not onto the neighbor's property. Because it is going to shine right into our bedroom windows. I mean, this is going to be a, a height that will look right over at them. There's no tree, there's no buffer going to cover this. Um, so that that's a concern, you know, yeah. a property. But it is you know, it is measurable. Uh, so the one foot candle power is the... Right, for the distance. Yeah. And then, I guess, what is the noise ordinance? I mean, what what type of, I mean, it's noisy with nine, we get that, but we're pretty quiet back there. Um, what's the current noise ordinance, and what kind of things can we expect as residents to be, you know, reasonable, and yet, you know, how are we going to, that? once this is built and we have a problem, much to we were talking about the trucking problem, we're getting nowhere. Now, yep. maybe we're not taking the right steps, but... How would that be? I mean, that is a, a general bylaw, and it is usually enforced through the police department. I think the building inspector is zoning enforcement. Well, no, it's not a zoning. It's not part of the zoning bylaw. Okay. So it's part of the general bylaws, um, and it's originally designed pretty much to allow uh, intervention with parties that get out of control. Um, you would probably be best off talking to Lieutenant Cook at the police department about how they go about enforcing it. Yeah, once it's built, we all know that it's built. So, you know, we have right now, we have the barbecue place that has, you know, already music outside. That's in our living room. Now, if they have music again, it's, it, it, is, it is quite loud. We have uh, a distance about pools and decibels you know, maybe there's something you could do for sound variation on the roof of the, the pool room to help cut that noise from traveling. Because once you open those sliders and you have a pool... <coughs> there are no sliders. Know. It's just a pair of swing doors to gain access to the exit. So it's not going to open up? No, no, no. Okay. no there's no more that's, sliders. I, I misunderstood yeah, but that's that. fine. Okay. I just wanted to clarify I thought, that. I imagine sliding glass yeah, doors no, in the pool. It is and, purely an inside and, pool, and the doors are just to pass through there. There's six, closures because they're exterior doors, so they won't be open. open. Or anything. Yeah, it's just three, one, set, a double set of doors. Twenty four six three right there. six. Right. And is there a snow removal plan that I would imagine not yet. goes with that? And not yet. No, and no, that's not going to go into the aquifer again. And again, it's just as as a town, as a resident, we're seeing um, the water table rise dramatically. If it, it was conservation, if you talk to them. They're getting a lot of uh, issues. We've had wet years. And, that's and that's that's not unexpected. We've had two wet years so far. Last year and so far this year have been wet years, so the water table probably is rising. 
I think it's if you look it's at the, more than just if two you look years, at the insane. river too in the back. I, I mean, I can show you. There's probably 30 trees on your property yeah. alone falling into the river, and they're falling all along that road. That you know, our road. It's a dirt road. That's the other thing. As that water table rises, we're now the dirt road. That's you know, basically a mud fest to get in and out of. So now we talk about are we going to talk about paving that road? Because as that water table rises, it used to dry out in the summer. It doesn't dry out now. So it's just, you know, it's a, it's a cycle. It's a concern. No one wants it in their backyard. I get that. I get it's happening. But, um, you know, we're dealing with a, I, I'm trying to get my perspective of where the dumpster is, why the dumpster has to be in the rear near the residences. But I, again, I could be wrong because I haven't had a chance to see the new plan. But why would you put a dumpster even near an aquifer? I do not know when there's a thousand other places it could go. Those are just off the top of my head, some of the things listening that concern me. So you're building a walled in area. You said that last yeah, week, right? Be, yeah, it'll be a Mason yeah. area. Mason. Just like as far water. as this goes, there are entire lots in the aquifer. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 But well, I guess abutting in, into the rear there because that is expanding. I mean, if you go out there, it has more. So I, I would suggest that you might have on the noise issues both ambient noise and idling and things like that, that rather than taking it up uh, sort of on a case-by-case -case basis and being at the mercy of whoever's taking calls at dispatch that night, that you do make an appointment to sit down with either Lieutenant Cook or with the Chief and discuss your concerns. And they've certainly been very receptive to meeting with people to discuss things like the speed of traffic in their neighborhood and uh, they could, uh, I think you'll have much better success addressing those from the top down rather than trying to report it um, on a case-by-case -case basis. And I'm sure that the chief and the lieutenant in turn will talk with both these property owners and I'm sure you're not the only ones in town who have trucks idling in your No, in your my mind, if they, if they come by and they, you know, if the police come by and they find a truck idling, they could go and tell the front desk and turn it off. I, we don't, I mean, they're just there for yep. us. But it's like a refrigerator truck, too. The guy's and in you, there sleeping. And the, 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 that, those things fall into the same thing as the island trucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, officer says turn it off. We got to turn it off. I don't care what the customer says either. I mean, that's. Again, we yeah. we operate in this town too. We've yeah. been here yeah. for a long time. Yeah. When I when I tell you this is state law, I drive truck. I know what state law says. And most of the New England states, not just Massachusetts, right. have a five minute limit. Well, like I confronted one of the bus drivers. I says, you know, you're here. Oh well, I'm fixing the bus, but he wasn't fixing the bus. They were sitting out there smoking, and the bus was idling with the air conditioning, so they could go in and out of the yeah. bus when they and, felt and, like and, it. Yeah. There is no exception. If the truck, if the vehicle is not being driven, mm -hmm. five minute limit. Okay? Five minutes. Five but, minutes. Oh, I love that. But again, okay. I think it has to come from the top down because right. if yes. you're asking just the patrol officer to enforce that versus responding to an accident or something like that, you know, you're going to get very spotty yeah. results. No. I think you need to no. share your concerns with police management and they can work with you to work out a uh, yeah. a plan. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bill's right. You know, talk to the talk to the talk to the real ones that can do something about it from the top down, as opposed to just trying to get a poor p patrol guy to go over there and beat somebody up like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I don't know the exact. I wish I I, I, there's, I mean there's a section of master the laws that say just what I told you. I'm not speaking from. You know, lack of knowledge. It's it is it is what it is. It also comes up with uh, at the elementary school with or even the high school with parents sitting there waiting for their kids to get out of yeah. something, yeah. and they're just sitting there idling. Whether it's well, there was two tractor trailers backed up to this white car in the parking lot when I was taking my granddaughter to school, and I, I go, they're still running, and they're outside of the truck and everything. So I know they were running more than five minutes. Yeah, I'm, and okay. I'm not even sure that it just applies. I mean, I believe it applies to motor vehicles, cars, and you know, gasoline cars and stuff like that are included. Not just uh, again, I'm not positive about the gasoline car, but I know it applies to the big trucks. So okay, enough about that. Um, you had some other things. 
the height limit, Jim, about the three stories yes. Yes. versus two, that's the zoning bylaw. That's the zoning bylaw. It's, 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 it's allowed within the zoning bylaw of the height. When was that changed? I'm just curious. Was it recently it's changed? Or? No. No? no. Well? Probably. Well, that there actually, it was changed uh, in the limit. In, uh, in the limb, it, 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 they are in the business district. They are also in the aquifer protection district. Um, there was a glitch in the adoption of the bylaw earlier that limited the height in the aquifer protection portion of the business district. But there was really no justifiable reason for that. So the business uses in the aquifer protection district were allowed to go to the same height as all other business districts. But that was the only change. Um, but they, yeah, they are within the, the height limit. That's a big change. Yeah, and unfortunately, because the higher rises are, you know, in the mall area where everything is developing like crazy, um, it's just, it, it's inching its way down, down to nine, the height of the buildings like the new Meadow Mall is, is lovely, and that's very close to us. But it's well done, it's tasteful, it's one level, it's, it's thought out well. Um, and this is just uh, upsetting that it's going to not only change, but it's going to be a, another story, because it's really going to infringe on the value of our property. And, and I guess, you know, we feel overwhelmed, there's not much you can do, but it really and, is. And would we, in, when we put in the village overlay district, I don't know, 15 or so years ago, 15, 12, whatever it was, we wanted to reduce, limit the size of buildings in the village overlay district, which, which is where this is, mm -hmm. and the business owners and a lot of others complained, oh, wait a minute, you're treating us different than the rest of the business district, and there was a lot of, a huge amount of pushback from all the property owners that owned frontage along Route 9 that, you know, it's not fair. You're, you're reducing the value of our property because we're all business district, but now we can't build as high as they can at the other end of Route 9. And so it was kept to be the same height all from the bridge all the way to the Amherst Town line for the, one of those reasons. Although, as I read the chart, it does say the height is 42 feet in the business district. He's saying maximum height is minimum, min height because it's, it's a uh, paper burning, you know? Right. So, so we we indicated the ridge height, but it's actually the mean height of the building, which is the average of the slope roof, who determines the height. You're 57 feet high. Right. It's the height. 57 feet. To the ridge. Ridge cupola. Cupola doesn't count. Cupola doesn't count. Cupola and uh, if you had air conditioning units, those on top of roof, those don't count. But how are you measuring it? It's usually from the peak to the bottom. Oh, it's mean height, top and It top. doesn't say mean height, I don't believe. Uh, no, it says max height of buildings. It doesn't apply to towers, ornament, uh, spires, whatever, but uh, No, we've had this discussion before, and exactly. I think we were talking about it being to the highest point of the building. Height is measured to the highest point of the building. From from the, the mean point is the uh, ground elevation. Mm -hmm. Okay, which since you're essentially a flat lot, right? It's the ground to the highest point of the building. Highest point of the roof. Okay. The same thing you allow us at the again. You need to say, yeah. we missed it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think there's some building code language about high yeah. buildings. That's the building the inspector should have picked that one up, too. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm getting on the outside guy, but uh, yeah. another <laughs> early experience. One, one, yeah, one, one, of, one of our problems with our zoning bylaw is we don't define a lot of things. Height is one of them. I'm upset. And so Tim has been, been going by building code for height. Yeah. 
to, as a definition, for lack of anything else, and I can't blame him for that, because we don't define height. I don't know what the building code says about height. I think mean height, I will talk to him tomorrow. Okay. We're, not, we're not approving this anyways tonight, so yeah. we, can, we, can, we can look into that yeah. and get an answer on, okay? But one of, the, one of the things they're working on, some of the bylaw things they're working on is a definitions section. Um, so that we get rid of a lot of this, what does that mean? Because the building code in some cases says one thing and we well, mean we something different. We don't define height. We don't define no, height, 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 height 40, 42 feet. 42 yeah. feet. Right. But definition would clarify what it's measured from where to where. That's right. And that's what the building code does very well. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's not just a few feet, it's 15 feet. Discrepancy. Good question. Mm -hmm. right. Could you go to the building, the architecture of the building? That's what I thought your building was like 50. 52, 57. 57. You said 57 feet high. What's the height of the roof? The ridge is 57.3. Oh, it is 57. Yes. Okay. But it really isn't because that's a mean height. No, no. that's the ridge. That's, that's the, the ridge. ridge. That, that's that's an, what we're saying is that that, that number okay. doesn't really count because we're talking about the mean height based, and we can give you that. We'll calculate that based on the slope. So if we put a gambrel roof on. Correct. So what's the height? What's the number below 57? That, no, that, that one. That's the eave, which is at 36. I think that number came up originally because of the ability for the fire truck to reach that high. And I think that's why we adopted that height, because there was supposed to be a second story added to the theaters in the Hampshire Mall. And that was the concern. And they never did add the second story. Or buy a fire truck. But we they, did. They did buy the fire we truck. We did buy the, the fire truck. truck. <laughs> So the mean, the mean height of that is, the, is, is based upon a triangular method, right? Correct. I believe so. Don't even, again, I'm not an expert on that. What's the slope of the roof? They are all 8 and 12. I want to make sure that we've got consistent 8, 12 pitch. 8, 12. Do a quick calculation, Mr. Architect. <laughs> <laughs> How do we go 4 and 12? Hmm? No, eight, eight. Yeah, that's a, uh, a sixty degree angle. Roughly. What was your your eve was at 32 30, or 30, 36? 30, 36, thirty six? Thirty six was the eve, and fifty seven is the peak. So you've got twenty one foot three. Half of that would be would put you at forty seven. 46 and change, if it's half. Yeah, but 8, 12, that's, that's not what the mean would be. Mm -hmm. It'd be a triangle method. And to get the centroid of the triangle, thing, what you're looking for. The what? Centroid of the triangle. I'm, 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 I'm not sure about the centroid, as much as the halfway point of the triangle, but it's, a, it's again, that depends on the, on the 812 pitch, so off the top of my head I'm not even going to try to guess it. I have to look at my, my, my formula book because it's been a long time since I've done that. What about the engineer in the back of the room? I love these guys. <laughs> 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 That's what I paid them for. <laughs> That's why we hired them. <laughs> Good answer. Can we have a six All right, please? I'm not even going to try to guess on that because it's like I said, I need my formula books on that one. It's been a long time. Okay. Um, so we'll need the lighting. Obviously, the mean, the actual mean height of what it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so there are a couple of things. Let's see. Uh, sign. There's no sign to sign. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we so can have 64. 64 square feet on the building and 64 on the pylon. Correct. Okay. 
Yeah, and one in the building can be divided into multiple signs. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and the one in a pylon can be internally illuminated because that's grandfathered. Grandfathered. Okay. Um, let's see. Lighting plan. Do we yeah. want to revisit the and the bonding issue now, or we want to keep it the way? No, I we don't. don't. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say Bill probably has an opinion. <laughs> um, so, well, Mark, what we're talking about is that the planning board used to require a bond to make sure that the building was in compliance with what they said they were going to build, mm -hmm. and it used to be forwarded to the town treasurer and it became kind of a bit of a bookkeeping nightmare. Now the authority has, well, they've given the building inspector a lot more authority to enforce the issue, so he can really deny a certificate of occupancy if it is not compliant. Withhold, yeah. yeah. So, so that's where we deferred. Pre to previously, he was interpreting the building code as saying that they complied with the building code, he had to give them a C of O without regard to whether they complied with zoning. Right. Now he is allowed to consider right. compliance with zoning. Right. Okay. And I will say that in the all the years that we were doing it that way, we never once did anything with it. Right. Pyramid Mall. It's like Bill de Blasio, I'm just a little late. <laughs> 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 Yeah, He's been I, sleeping on a on a Merritt Parkway yeah. with with his engine running. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a little backed up. So what okay. I have, um, uh, so the sound has been taken care of, the lighting has been taken care of, the planning has been acknowledged, uh, noise has yeah. been concerned. So we need to see a lighting plan. Yes. Right. With movement and everything. We want to see a sign design. Um, we have to repost for transfer development. Yeah, right? I will, I will, I'll get to that one. And we just need a calculation from you, like a, a page, just saying how you. It's on the front. It of the is plan. okay. Uh, maybe just copy it off and on a, a handout size thing. Um, I took a look through the erosion and sediment control bylaw, and I don't find our authority to waive provisions of it. So you'll have to point us to, to that. And um, we have to resolve the definition of height. That would come from Tim. Well, it, partly. Uh, so Tim interprets the building code. We interpret the zoning bylaw. So. Uh, I think we're going to have to have a conversation. It may be worthwhile inviting him to come in when we do that. Okay. Um, is there anything else on the punch list? Did you talk about the two foot separation versus the requirement of the three foot separation? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the, they're asking for a waiver. I saw that. Yeah. And we don't know what our waiver authority is. Yeah, I don't think so. And then, Mike, you have to watch this on video and file the piece of paper. I saying, will. I will. Okay. Yeah. Is it going to be on YouTube, John? Or he's not there? Yeah, it, it will be. It will, will be. be on YouTube. It will be on YouTube tomorrow. What about the seventy-one percent parking? That's what the TDR. I forgot to post for the TDR. So okay, I'm going to okay, post. Okay, I'll, okay, I will okay. post for the TDR. I'll get to okay, that one. Okay. Okay. Seven twenty three acres of TDR. Okay. The reason I'm pointing this out, I want to make sure you guys know I read this stuff. <laughs> I just had one quick last question. I know that um, Masioti is widening Route Nine, which is going to benefit everyone traffic wise. So the traffic study for something like this really can't be applied because you have to then in taking to count what's going to happen in 2020. Is that kind of how we're looking at all of these? Yeah, basically, we look, maybe looking a better answer, but 
we apply with what's there today. If the state is proposing to do something a year, two years, or five years down the road, we typically let the developer know this may happen, but we're applying today's bylaw to what is there today. Um, they're probably set far enough back. And the taking of land, or the taking of, I'm not sure there's really much taking of land through there, because I, I don't know if the, the right of way for Route 9 will really become much wider. What will probably occur is the green space on each side of Route 9, for the most part lately, when they've been doing some of this work, has gotten virtually nil, and the right of way is about the same. That, that's why they're putting the parking, the, the sidewalks, you know, you got a, a roadway, a curb, and sidewalk, as you see down the other end of Route 9, which is obviously, we can talk about that for a while, on how that doesn't make the most sense for snow plowing in the winter. But, uh, um, you know, so two things about Route 9. One, the, the current plan is for a three-lane reconstruction with a shared uh, left turn lane in the middle, uh, not a full four-lane reconstruction. And second, uh, this is actually a net loss of rooms compared to what was there. So I wouldn't anticipate there would be any traffic issues, any more traffic issues than already exist. A lot exists. <laughs> we can't get out. Yeah, we literally have to leave 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I'm not the only one, though. We're all experienced. No, uh, yeah, that's the thing. If you yeah. have to go on, that's an issue with any yeah. any yeah. commercial yeah. development on Route 9. It's yeah. not a signalized intersection. And uh, for their own reasons, the state will not approve new signals without um, a lot of substantiation of a need for it. Um, Warrant analysis. Yes. There had, uh, the site has to warrant a, a traffic uh, signal by virtue of accidents. Uh, and the Maze Mill Valley hasn't gotten why. That's, that's the mm -hmm. one that there's an accident there every night. But, uh, they will not, uh, the, the crossing between the malls on South Maple Street, what's oh. called the Southern Crossing, yeah. uh, from Penny's to Walmart, does not have enough accidents to warrant a traffic signal. <laughs> Again, this is the state. We're not, we can sit here and poke fun at them all the time, but the, like Bill says, they say that there isn't enough accidents there to warrant a signal, even if the mall is willing to pay for it. Yeah. And it's. They're tough to deal with. I, I know. You know. Yeah, so, just curious how, like, you, you know, got all this. Yeah, we, we, we've been asked, control. though, you know, could, can you put that dividers down the middle of Route 9 like you have on Route 2 going through Athol to discourage? crossing traffic. No, those don't work. <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, you know, and they probably, you know, I, I don't know, you know, enough of that. So, so if we continue this to the second meeting of June, is that enough time to yep. get the paper? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I will, I will post for the TDR for June 18th, and we'll continue this meeting to that date, so we'll have the, the issues all done for that one. Is that enough time for you to respond to everything, Mark? Yeah, our lighting plan is a two-day process. We'll figure okay. Out to do. I don't see anything unique here. Okay. And I don't know how far up the corporate chain you have to go to get your sign design approved. We can call. Yeah. We can get a sign package, but. With bridge. Tim's definition and yeah. 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 yeah, I think I'd probably like to if you could encourage Tim to come to our come to that meeting to discuss height or put something in writing about his interpretation of height. Yeah. Yeah, and if he uses mean height then the cal we would we'd like to have a calculation anyways for mean height. Yeah. Was the wording you said the mean roof elevation or mean mean roof height? Mean roof height. Okay, the mean roof height is the eave, the ridge minus the eave divide by two. That's the state that's the state building code? And then the, the mean roof elevation would be that number plus the front door elevation. 
That's mass. That's bulk of that's mass building. I'm not code. sure if it's mass, but it's it's the standard building code and what's defined as oh, mean okay. roof height. Yeah, we we need the mass building code numbers because they have some. They go by the base. They generally go by. go by the bulk of code. However, there are enough exceptions that is going to be. You're going to see what it really means because sometimes we've. You're going to see the mass building code. Be <laughs> first. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, I mean somebody said, well, we, Tom, Tim says once, well, we adopted the Boca Code, but we don't have it here, and it's different here and different here. Well, I mean, that's mass. Again, that's that's true. That's and mass am amends it. To yes. The so amendments. we have amendments about this thick, and then the IBC itself. Yeah. So probably the only thing that's, that's uniform is the National Electrical Code is the National Electrical Code, and we all use that. However, we're talking the building code here, and... Even a plumbing code has some very unique things in it. So, okay. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're looking up, but, you know. Got it. And, and we, hopefully, we'll find out if that's the same number or not. So what happens if you're, you're using one standard and Tim's using another? How do you come to, you know, that, that's what we how do you define that, what That's what we need to decide because, like I said, we don't define height. So without the de definition in the zoning bylaw of height, we're kind of stuck behind the, the wall, the, the door, if you would, and we almost have no choice but to go by what's Tim using, which is the state building code, because until we define height. Um, so Tim's already seen these plans, so I'm assuming that he's already. Well, he is looked. Because I know I talked to him. He had looked at the plans, he, and he didn't even know it was that yeah, was when it was he, in the buffer zone yeah. of. Yeah, he, he, he's not, he's not going to put a whole lot of effort into the plans until they actually apply for a building permit because he'll do a quick look at them. Does it generally comply with zoning? Well, that's your issue. What do, what do I see as glaring issues? And he, he has so much going on right now, I doubt he put much of a look into these plans because I know he is buried with all kinds of inspections and everything else. And... I mean, all the, with all the other things going on, on in, in construction or all, along Route 9 and, you know, the new town projects, he's been spending a he's he's busy. Okay, so we have lighting, mean height of the building, um, signs and sizes. What else did you have? TDR. Built? Oh, TDR. Oh, yeah, I got to Okay, TDR, yeah. And authority to waive uh, the separation. Oh, yeah. Definition of height, and Mike has to watch and report okay. so he can participate. And we continue this to, to the 18th of June, is that? Yes. Yes. Okay. June 18th will be the next hearing. Everyone hear that? So no. far. Okay. If there seems to be any controversy or concern about the, the height, should we suggest the variance or? Uh, well, let, let's see what, okay. what, what what happens at that one. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. Um, do you have anything else, Mark, or? I don't think so. In your group right now? Okay. okay. Um, our next hearing is the 11th of May with the CONCOM, and then we'll go back to you. Okay. Okay, that works out. Is that uh, color red ring satisfactory to everybody for uh, building colors? Those are the actual colors are going to be on a building? That hasn't been finalized. Oh, okay, so we'll need building colors at the 18th. Okay. And the type of material? Yes. Yes. Uh, I know you said you, were, you anticipated a asphalt shingle roof. Just, you know, verify that, the color of it. We can't tell you what to use. Zoning cannot regulate means of construction, but we can expect to see what it's going to look like. Right. So we don't get surprised when it comes out cherry pink, cherry red. <laughs> or made out of hardy plank. We have been surprised in the past by <laughs> projects that of blue that got built in a different color palette than they had been permitted in. Even a different design. Yes. Um, we made some very minor changes. I told you we shrunk the building. We changed the driveway configuration. Right. Do you need these updated plans? 
regarding this, we don't wait till the final. Checks. Wait until every. We don't need an updated plan. Those changes are minor enough that okay, you told us about it. Once you finally get, we we, we don't need tons of paperwork. I, I just want to make the offer. Yeah. So okay. that's that's why. Thank you. For you. So Thank once you. you get once we get a final set of plans after everything is well said and done, we'd like a final yes, set. Okay. Yep. Very good. In fact, the final set really, really doesn't need to be until the one that we sign and when I you get the three the sets. Okay. We don't need something along the way because then we just. We make, we make the recycler very happy. That, that, after you prove it, I have to add the statement on there. Everything's in right. compliance. Then yep. you sign that. Th that that would be fine at that point. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sure. I mean, if you want to make one sheet in of a change or something like that, that's it. But a complete set, no, we don't need complete sets. Very good. Okay. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Anything else from the view for the time being? Mm -hmm. On the 18th, we'll see you at the back. 18th. Pardon? We'll see you at the next meeting. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Those were three butters. That's Cindy Kitsa. I don't know the names of the other two. Let's Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Well, See you on the 18th. Um, for the 23rd, which is this Thursday, I think you should have gotten an invite for ribbon cutting for the new hotel. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yep. That's this. That's Thursday. This is Thursday. Okay. Tomorrow. One no, Thursday. 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 Yeah. One Thursday. Thursday. One Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I can't make it. I will be. That's on my New York run day. On the road again. On the road again. Yeah, I did. Uh, okay. It came to the planning board, and I sent it around. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I'm not the one who sent it out. So, I mean, you're invited for me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. It takes care of that. Um, let's see. I can make that so I can make the, I can make copies of that on my front. I can find a mailing link or something to copy of that. That general in information. We got a letter from the historical commission complaining about the lighting at the Dunkin' Donuts. Um, they're complaining about the back lighting sign, the backlit signs, and that the illumination butts onto abutting properties. And this was received. Oh, there's no date on this. Boy, yes, there is. The date is April 14th, but we didn't get it until after our last meeting. I made a copy of this, and I wrote on that the issues with the lighting is a zoning officer item. Backlighting is permitted, and is not as it is not internal lighting. I signed my name. I gave a copy to Tim and to the Historical Commission, and basically. You know, the zoning enforcement officer has to look at that. Well, well, they have to come back before us because the name of the business is now Duncan. It's not Dunkin' Donuts, so they're going to have to change the sign probably to reflect that. That's, that's, that might be an uh, opportunity. You know, if they change it with within the parameters of what's there already, like you know, refacing a sign doesn't require, right? Uh, doesn't trigger anything. It's a shot, right? And. Uh, let's see. If you remember, Joe and I went to a meeting back in the spring or the fall? It was in a winter. It was in a winter at the Amherst Library, right? Anyway, it was about the flood plain mapping in the town of Hadley and basically up and down the Connecticut River Valley. And they had redrawn the flood plain maps town by town. And Hadley had a whole bunch of new areas in the floodplain. And Joe and I both knew that a lot of it is not flooding. And we pointed it out to the people because that's what they, that was the people from FEMA. And then we actually applied for a grant from PVPC to see if they could help us study this. And come to find out, there was so much of a concern not just with Hadley, but with Hatfield and a lot of the other towns, especially in the right here in the valley, Sunderland, Waitley, because it, it, it affects all of us, that they were actually going to look at doing some kind of a study because they wouldn't get the grant for that reason, but they were looking to do something with the flood plain overlay maps and how it could be addressed for the members that belong to PVPC and along the valley. Jimmy, you said that it wasn't flooding. It, the period, it doesn't flood is the correct... Uh, okay. Right? It, it doesn't flood. It does not flood. No. Okay. 
Some of the areas that they designated as flooding do not flood. Okay. Anyways, we received a letter from FEMA um, in a mail, and it goes to the Board of Selectmen, and it said, uh, okay, it was November 27th that we went to the meeting, according to this. Conducted a discovery meeting for the Middle Connecticut Watershed um, and Risk Assessment Map. And it has to do with the Connecticut River for us and the Deerfield River, like I said, for upstream. The purpose of this letter is to inform you that there may be field surveying activities within your community. The field survey task will commence in May 2019 through winter of 2020 in select communities within the Middle Connecticut watershed. The data obtained from this task will be incorporated in subsequent hydro hydrology and hydraulic studies that may be used to produce an updated flood insurance study report and flood insurance rate map panels for your community. And it goes on to explain a bunch of other stuff. But basically that they're going to actually do some surveying as a start to verify elevations. So, and the, right. and the reason they're doing this is because, because you know, we know, but need, I want to make sure they need more premiums. They need more premiums. They need more yes. premiums. So yes. they want people to pay premiums so the people build, that build mega million dollar mansions on uh, the shores of uh, Miami Beach are, are, don't have to pay as much insurance. So this is, this is called wealth transference. Yes. So there is another related meeting coming up. That's next Tuesday. Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here. And that is with the state office. Correct. There was a whole built, <coughs> they had a, they have a whole agenda what they're yeah. putting on about that. I don't, who should be the point on this select board, conservation, planning board, or should it be in someone appointed individually to have the responsibility? I mean, just I'm, I'm not sure. I think I want to see what this person is going to come out and be talking about on Tuesday, and then maybe we can make a decision and find out. You know, my guess is it probably should be. Last time it was, when it was initially, initially Eddie, uh, the planning board was in charge of the mapping, but the select, select board had the vote. So they assigned the planning okay. board the to make the presentation yeah. to the town. Yeah, I mean. Well, we, we will have to make the presentation mm -hmm. if it is going to be altered. Yeah. Um, I would suspect of those groups, we are probably the most knowledgeable, except maybe for the Conservation Commission having some too, but the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> is, that, is that a good comment? <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't, what I mean is that as far as flood areas and water areas, I know, I know, you know it's the conservation and us, not the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. And I would think that the, probably the planning board, if there has to be a point board, it might be us. Because we'll have to make the presentation if it is altered to the town meeting. Right. So we should know something about it and right. why, because... There was a biology professor at Amherst College in the 70s named Lincoln Brower who did a study of the flooding river, and it was yeah. about the Connecticut River. And well, he was dead. He, He's probably dead and gone. Remember that? He was predicting that the Northfield Mountain Pump Storage would cause a tidal surge <laughs> that would right. uh, reach the, oh, what's that, those rocks in South Hadley just over the north, just south of the Hadley line. Oh, I, I don't, I know what they're calling. I know where you something mean. ledge or something that uh, he don't, he don't want to control anything or change anything. He, he, he was wanted, predicting you know. that the water release from Northfield would raise the river so much that it would actually come up to the those to the rocks that just at the South Had at the Hadley South Hadley border. There's a little road that goes yeah. off to the right. There's um, is that the tap, the Titan's Pier? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So I, th I think the idea was that uh, yeah, he was grossly overestimating. <laughs> there the is impact. a tide. There, there is, but he did exaggerate it. Well, he's probably yeah. looking at the Deerfield River and seeing what happens there when they let, let it loose. Yeah. So, uh, what was the root trigger of this whole FEMA? I mean, where did this come out of them? They, they want to resurvey. They, they want to digitalize. They want to update 
the floodplain maps of the valley. Um, and it's not just Connecticut River, it's the Connecticut River, the Deerfield, mm. uh, the Beaver Brook, Sawmill, Ash mm. Swamp, Buttery Brook, Deerfield River, um, in the watershed of the Connecticut River. Is this something they're doing nationally, or did they pick us out? I believe it is. A, it's got to be a national I, it, thing. It, it, yeah, it, this, is, this is a federal insurance thing. Yeah. The, uh, and the base maps are pretty old. Yeah. I mean, you could, they, you could get a digital view of them, but um, if you actually bought the paper map, it would probably still have a 1980s revision date on it. The, their, their comment is that we only have paper maps. They're outdated and they are inaccurate. And there's only one company in the whole United States now that will analyze the flood insurance that's located in Houston, Texas. Remember when she said that? Yeah. So what they want to do is they basically want to digitize the floodplain maps and make them more accurate and reflect what is really going on today. And so they had the original maps for each of the towns and an updated map, proposed updated map, at this meeting that Joe and I went to. And they had areas flooding that, I mean, my mother and grandparents lived through the 36 foot. And I know my grandfather's property did not flood. And yet they've got most of it underwater. And a lot of other areas in Hadley, very similar things. And it's easy to say that we could deny their their redrawn maps, but there's three sanctions. Number one, you cannot get any federal insurance or if any uh, for a house that's built in that area from a federally insured lending, lending institution, which are all banks. And number two, the town cannot get any grants that has a federal attachment like APR or sewer funds or water funds. There's a third sanction too that they had over at. Yeah. But it's basically mortgage, couldn't get a mortgage from a federally insured lending institution mm -hmm. and you couldn't get any grant money that was tied to feds. So, so I'll give you another example that I'm familiar with. Um, in North Hadley, on the River Drive side of the Mill River, you come through the S-turn and then you head into the village of North Hadley and the Mill River is on your right. Uh, the River Drive side of the Mill River is not in the flood zone. The French Street side of the Mill River, which is exactly the same height, is all considered a flood zone. Although a couple of people have gone to the trouble of hiring a surveyor to calculate the actual height of the property line uh, of the property, and have been exempted out, but they won't exempt the entire street unless you individually petition to have your lot measured out. So, I'm just curious, yeah. how do they do that? I mean, you know, from the 125 is our flood well, level here. But well, there, there are benchmarks in several areas in Hadley. There's but one like there, in French Street, yeah. Okay, we got one here at Russell School. There are at least, there's at least one benchmark in North Hadley. Okay. Okay. Randy believes on the house on the island. I don't know that. But there is a benchmark in North Hadley someplace. And so to be accurate, they need to go from that benchmark to wherever you're measuring to get the right elevation. Now, benchmark elevation or, or marking elevation is a whole lot easier today than it was 40 years ago simply because of the digital age. Mm -hmm. They can get I mean, you, you can take your GPS and put it on the ground, and if it, give, if it gives you elevation, and probably be reasonably close to what the real thing is. But is it good enough for, you know, this? I don't know. And how accurate do they make them? You know, these are things that I don't know the answers to. Who owns that house on the island? I don't know. Somebody's got to be keeping it up because it doesn't it, fall down. It may. It's the guy who owns architectural millwork, I believe. Ah, okay. Okay. So, you know, there's uh, well, you can go to the GIS map of the town and pull up the property card for it. The uh, so you know there, there there's 
I okay. think there there's several benchmarks in Hadley. Okay. So okay. That's and th th that beside being like I said the, the digital, I don't know how accurate those how really really precise those are. Randy, how do Audi cars have them in them? Give you elevation too. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Thank so, um, that's that's general information. Those two. Are you gonna be there Tuesday? I'm gonna, I, I'm I'm gonna be there Tuesday. Tuesday, one o'clock. Yes. I'm away all next week. So I'm gonna yeah. Okay. I, I might, might try to come. Like, I will be there chance. Tuesday. What time is it Tuesday? One. One o'clock. Right. I believe it's right here. Anything else? Do I just wanted to put out that policy oh, statement? I'm sorry. Um, I'm not looking for a vote on it, but um, just for the consideration of uh, going forward, just to have a statement on record. Should we have a vote that says that? Probably. I would think we want to make make that a motion. Okay. You're going to send the copy to everybody, or? Oh, sure. You're going to copy. It's on your, it's on your agenda. Yeah, it's on your agenda. That, oh, that one. Okay. So I'll make yeah. a motion to uh, adopt a statement of non discrimination that reads The Happy Planning Board addresses all projects and matters before it on their own merits, imposing only valid requirements based on the Hadley zoning bylaw uh, and regulations. Uh, Massachusetts general laws and regulations and best engineering practices without regard to the race, color, religion, national origin, ancestry, sex, gender identity, age, handicap, handicap disability, participation in discrimination compliant related activities, sexual orientation, genetics, or active military service or veteran status, or any other basis prohibited under applicable law of persons appearing before the board in any category. Non-discrimination and equal treatment are the policy of the planning board. That is the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Not. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Oh, just as another piece of information, on June 19th, the day, that's a Wednesday, after our 18th meeting, the Board of Selectmen is requesting a joint meet to save that date for a possible joint meeting between the planning board and a board of selectmen to discuss various items. Um, you didn't forward that. Wednesday, June 19th time. Uh, that would be the selectmen meeting. I'm, and it, they don't have a time yet, but I'm assuming it's probably going to be like at 7.30 or something of that night at the usual board, board of selectmen meeting. They want to discuss items like, oh, what are the things they, they, that uh, David Nixon put out? Expanding, looking at affordable housing zoning, looking at more dense or larger commercial size buildings, look at possibly more dense residential developments where we have sewer and water um those a lot of the ideas that they're putting out are around increasing the water and sewer usage to get more fees brought into town okay so again we're not going to talk about it just say the date and as we hear more we'll let you know okay we can we may have enough information that they will have posted their agenda by the time of our next meeting so I will put a line um, something on our agenda to discuss what they posted okay just for Mark's uh, yeah. sake uh, affordable housing is always a evergreen issue in every community Hadley has 13 percent we have the highest percentage of affordable housing in Happy Valley. So uh, the state cannot impose the, what's the 40B restrictions that can overrule the town zoning. So cannot be an unfriendly 40B, it can only yes. be a friendly 40B. Correct. Okay. Um, 
just trying to review something from last month. When we when we vote on a, approval of the site plan, yep. then what it, it has to be recorded? Yes. And Bill, then there's so many days for an appeal, is that right? Yeah, after it's filed with the clerk. Okay. Bill, Bill will type, get it typed up and record with the town clerk, and everybody that is in a butter receives a notice that it has been filed with the town clerk. Not necessarily the notice, right? I've been sending everyone the full thing. Okay. Since so they, they, they get a full copy of the of the uh, approval, whatever that may include, and then from the date that it's filed with the town clerk, anybody that is an aggrieved party has 20 days to appeal that decision. On the 21st day, if no appeal has been filed, they can go and get a building permit. Okay. And we have 60 days? 90 days. 90 days for the date of the approval to get it filed with the town clerk. I try to do better. And is there is there judicious work that we have to do on that? Or is it just a clerical going to filing? Just writing up from my notes to a okay. document. I'm just wondering if we're subject to criticism, if we're quick on some and slow on others, that we're showing prejudice. Uh, it's entirely a function of my workload. Okay. And uh, spring is a very busy real estate time. I'm going to have to go back to the office after this meeting. <laughs> so, um, just I'm just trying to keep us out of this. Yep. No. Nope, it's um, uh, you could resign as uh, clerk. And I, we I could make the new guy clerk. You. We could appoint you. You can take it on. Yep. No. Everybody is. Uh, um, but from other communities, when people apply for a building permit, a great example is the Fish and Wildlife, Northern Fish and Wildlife. They, uh, John Oliver put that in the budget, and it was supposed to be in Amherst. But the building process, the permitting process, was going to take a year and a half in Amherst. And they had to be in the building in a year and a half. So they came to Hadley because we do expedite things compared to other communities. There is, I mean, you will hear over time, we have, we have several businesses in Hadley that originally started in Amherst, but they went to expand. Their process is such a lengthy thing that they came to Hadley. NES over in the industrial park was one. Yeah, HBO McKesson. Yeah. And they said that in Hadley we could get a building permit from the time we apply to the date of getting, of getting a building permit, you know, four months, give or take, if things are in order. In Amherst, it's, they were telling us it's sometimes exceeding 18 plus months. And, uh, you know, it's just the differences in the way things are done. Yeah. Motion, Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Thank you, John. <laughs>